Freddie, thank you for joining me for a coffee with the editor. It is certainly exciting times for the rail industry here in South Africa. I Indeed. believe that the rail safety regulator is going to be playing quite an integral role in what Transnet Freight Rail is doing in terms of the sale of slots and the new entrance. Um, and, you know, there's, there's obviously going to be some new players uh, entering the market who who aren't a hundred percent of fair with rules of rail or the you know the permits the processes so tell me what you guys as the railway safety regulator are going to be doing and how you're going to be engaging uh, start by saying that uh, this initiative is uh, you know it supports these uh, government pronouncements on the you know vertical separation that's now you know an entity owning or operating you know the tracks basically an infrastructure and then train operating companies coming in, uh, uh, you know, to provide those uh, train operations with uh, their own staff, uh, uh, their own drivers and so on. So this is uh, the vertical separation that's uh, envisaged in this, uh, the rail policy. So this is uh, the way things are going. And this is just the first step in uh, what has been pronounced in this, uh, in this uh, policies. And uh, we quite support it. Uh, we think that uh, uh, Trustnet is going through it uh, in a very prudent manner. Uh, since they're starting off with a piloting phase, that will be about uh, uh, two years. And then uh, from there, they will take uh, even regulations we think is ready. But uh, from there, then they will take lessons from uh, this piloting and uh, move into the future with that. So that's quite a prudent way of approaching this, uh, uh, this initiative. And it's happening all over the world. If you look at the UK, the, uh, everywhere in the world, there's at some point in these uh, railways, uh, at some point there is some reform, you know, mm -hmm. there is some reform that will, in many instances, you know, vertically separate the railway so that, uh, you know, we are aware of where the costs are, so on and so on. And since in the end, uh, they are able to be, you know, operated in an efficient manner, uh, we are able to make uh, our money through railways in that way so on and so on. So it's an initiative uh, that we quite support and we are willing to even do, <laughs> you know, no, no, to stretch our resources, to stretch our resources to make sure that uh, trust not accomplish uh, what they want to do. Obviously, all the way we're going to make sure that uh, safety is not compromised. So in terms of our role, uh, these uh, train operating companies uh, is not really a new thing. We have uh, operators uh, that are currently train operators, you know, that are currently op traversing lines that are not theirs. There is some sort of uh, that uh, in certain instances in the country. And uh, we're going to continue playing our oversight role in that manner. Uh, these new train operating companies, uh, they will have uh, section 22 of our act requires these uh, uh, train operating companies in order for them to conduct these railways in a legitimate manner. They need to be in possession of a safety railway safety permit that's issued by the regulator. So nothing changes. Safety needs to be uh, looked after, and for that they would need to have uh, a safety management system. That's really just a system that uh, makes sure that uh, we, you know, we achieve our business objective in a safe manner. That we protect our assets, we protect our people, we protect our environment. So in brief, uh, that's going to be our role and we'll be continue, uh, we'll continue playing our oversight role in that manner, issuing safety permits to uh, uh, these potential operators. How long does it take for a safety permit to be issued? Yeah, getting to that, as I spoke about, you know, even stretching our resources. Normally we we'll take up to 90 days. That's up to 90 days for, uh, you know, for us to, because we need to make sure that uh, everything is covered. The first application normally is not a once-off thing. We go as for you know areas of inadequacies to be covered. There would be to and fro. So we normally ask operators to, even with existing operators, for example, to apply 90 days before you know the expiry of a safety permit. Mm. And uh, these safety permits are normally you know are valid for three between three and five years. So there's ample time for this process to ensue. That's now with uh, the <clears throat> our existing uh, operators, but uh, seeing that things are going this way, and uh, we uh, we have committed to our exco to the safety committee as well, because this is a, a initiative that we need to support by all means. 
to say that I will even look into turning these applications around in 30 days. That's quite ambitious. We don't know if we're going to have that right. Uh, it will assist if we receive this uh, uh, safety permit applications. You know, uh, uh, they should be adequate the first time around. You know, there should yeah. be just uh, little gaps to cover. It would help, but uh, we are trying to assist the, 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 the railway industry in that manner to shorten this safety assessment uh, period from the normal 90 to, 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 to 30. Uh, we'll see if that will work. It will all depend on the, the number of uh, applications we'll get as well. Yeah. We might have to look at our resources if that will support that ambitious uh, uh, target of 30 days. It'll be interesting to actually find out how many applications you get. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a tricky thing to do. We have to ready ourselves for that, but uh, at the same time, we are not too sure about the number of uh, applications we're going to get. We are not too sure if these are completely new operators because uh, that will help a lot. If it's new operators, then uh, they are, if, if it's existing operators, excuse me, then uh, it will make things easier for us. So we have some level of comfort in that they currently have a robust safety management system since we have you know, issued a safety permit, permit to them. So it's really just an extension of their operations that uh, they will be requiring. But uh, so, we're not in any way saying that uh, our new entrants are excluded from this process. We're going to be equally supporting them in that manner. So how does an operator go about getting that? Yeah, there, are, there is a determination that we published in uh, 2018. It uh, talks to the content of this safety management system. It talks to the safety culture, the risk assessment, there needs to be uh, you know, commitment from management. We need to know about the standards that, would, that are going to be applied, so on and so forth. It, it's an instrument that's uh, used worldwide, mm. worldwide, even yeah, worldwide to ensure that the correct processes, policies, and uh, procedures are in place, mm. right? Are in place so that uh, we are able to have that comfort to issue a safety permit. Generally, it's those issues, risk assessment, commitment by, by leadership, we need to know about this, your, your safety management system. What does it look like? We need to know that we're going to be having safety audits. We need to know that uh, we're going to be, you know, utilizing or using uh, staff, especially safety critical staff, you know, that are fit for duty, you know, uh, the medical surveillance, so on and so on. So it's broadly those issues. They are not new to anyone, but uh, these are the basic requirements that uh, one needs to look at. But uh, just to complete my answer, uh, Philippa, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, that uh, determination is, is the law of the country. You know, a determination, almost a regulation, if you want to, that stipulates those, uh, those requirements. And uh, they are very accessible from the RSR website. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can always share them as well with anyone who needs to have uh, access to those. And uh, with regard to the safety permit application process as well, there is a determination or a guideline that uh, sort of uh, tries to that assist uh, operators in applying for 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 these uh, safety operating safety permits. So the documentation is there, and we are saying in terms of uh, our legislation, nothing will change. In terms of our requirements, nothing will change. What we will do instead is to look at uh, facilitating this uh, the, the permit application process, making it uh, the, 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 that period shorter, so on and so on, because we know this is. Uh, you know, a uh, uh, business sensitive matter. People who want to to be on board, to be onboarded by the regulator as soon as as soon as possible. You're also going to be looking at the rolling stock to make sure the rolling stock is in good working order and and meets the technical mm. requirements for the line. For sure, uh, we're going to be looking at that because uh, obviously that uh, rolling stock, that piece of rolling stock, it needs to be you know technically compatible with uh, the, uh, uh, the the transnet infrastructure. In terms of the gauge, you know, the, the, the profile, the profile of that rolling stock uh, in terms of what it can do, the traction systems, they need to be compatible, uh, communication systems, they need to be compatible, the wheel rail interaction issue, that's, uh, that needs to be looked at. Uh, so those are the standards that we'll look at whether uh, these uh, operating companies comply with uh, uh, what uh, Transnet has issued as their statement of infrastructure. Really, it's just a document describing that infrastructure that. Uh, uh, you will have to operate in this envelope, all right? Okay. So we're going to be looking at that. But um, know that uh, Transnet 
uh, will also be looking into those issues. Mm. Uh, we'll be looking to make sure that uh, these train operating companies have uh, are compatible and road with the and road with the rolling stock. I've looked into their presentation when they were engaging the, uh, uh, the industry. Mm. They will also need to know where this uh, rolling stock will be inspected. Uh, they will also need to know, and they have expressed that. Let's not trust that. They will also need to know that even this, uh, our drivers as well, that uh, they are certified and competent mm. in the work uh, that, that's going to be, that they're going to be carrying out. So, but uh, we are also going to be looking at those, those issues. Okay, so you, you brought it's up not that. different from how we, we, we are approaching the current, uh, the current applicants. Okay. So, so I'm not us... saying we, we are not going to be better some. Uh, yeah. But instead, we're going to try uh, and shorten that, uh, the application's timeline. Okay, but you brought up an interesting statement where, you know, Translate is almost going to double check you. No, 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 they're not going to, the, the Translate does not, it doesn't have a mandate on that. But obviously, they need to make sure that these train operating companies that they bring on board, they have the rolling stock that's uh, fit for purpose. But uh, that's their work. They need to do that, whether Transnet, whether it's Prasa, for example, or Robos Rain, mm. transversing uh, at Transnet lines, Transnet would need to be doing that. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay, because you obviously pa you participated in the information session. We were invited uh, almost at the last minute to the information session. Uh, unfortunately, uh, management and leadership were not available for that meeting. But uh, what we've seen, uh, what we have since done, is that we have uh, looked into the program and uh, also have uh, that presentation, what was presented to, to yeah. the industry. So I have that information, but I was not physically or even virtually in the meeting. Have you set up a, a, like a team that's going to manage the new upgrades, uh, Transnet Freight Rail and the Rail Safety Regulator? Yeah, there, there isn't a team as such, but uh, the, 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 we are thinking we, we might just need to augment our safety permit assessors. You know, yeah. Uh, the team that will be assessing these safety permit applications from our new operators. Uh, we think we might need to augment that. It, it will really just depend in the end, uh, the number of applications we'll be receiving. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that Transnet and the uh, leadership of this, uh, uh, of this organization, leadership, I mean, COO and CEO, they have been engaging with, uh, you know, high leadership from uh, the peers from mm -hmm. Transnet. So uh, the matter is receiving serious attention. We've uh, tabled that uh, to our safety committee as well. That's the safety committee of the board. We've uh, tabled the intentions as well, and uh, they know all about uh, what could be the challenges, and uh, they're ready to support the industry where, where, where it's needed. If I remember correctly, I think maybe last year or the year before, you guys were going to be adding some new regulations to the Railway Safety Act. Has that been done? Yeah, the latest one will, what I will refer to as uh, railway reserve, uh, uh, the railway reserve uh, regulations mm -hmm. that uh, really, they really say that, you know, uh, conduct some risk assessments, right, uh, into your rail reserve in terms of uh, the fencing uh, that you'll require, mm -hmm. uh, conduct those uh, risk assessments, and then uh, that will tell you then in the end that uh, I will either not require any form of fencing at all, Mm. Or uh, these are the minimum requirements in terms of facing uh, uh, that I will call because uh, obviously we're not trying to build a wall all around our infrastructure, but uh, that needs to be informed by risk assessments. And uh, they would need to conduct those risk assessments, inform the RSR of uh, yeah what is planned, what the output of the risk assessments are, mm. and then uh, give us uh, an implementation plan. Because uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the protection of uh, rail reserve is quite uh, is quite an issue, but obviously we had to provide uh, 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 the act or the regulations are enforced. But obviously we had to provide some, uh, our operators with some transitional period, you know, for them to look at the provisions of uh, the requirements of the regulations and make sure that uh, they are in the end able to comply uh, uh, completely. You're going to make everything available on your website that uh, new operators, so I'm not talking about current operators because they're up to date and obey with your legislation mm. or, or permit requirements, but certainly the new guys are probably going to need a lot of information. So I'm hoping you should even have like a dedicated 
you know, third party open access link. Everything you need to know. Well, well what we tend to do because some of some of these could uh, some of these documentation. I mean, uh, they are not better, and I'm not trying to say that. But one would need to have, uh, you know, some knowledge of uh, safety, and, and that, that, that that's very necessary. One would need to have some knowledge of safety management for uh, for them to be able to eventually, you know, be issued with the safety permit. But uh, what we tend to do that uh, just came out uh, last week through some uh, management engagement meeting that uh, maybe let us uh, look into developing a a QA a QA uh, document that we can make available on our website just to, you know, just to, uh, can I just put it this way, you know, RSR for the dummy. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I hope you'll edit that out of. <laughs> Real safety for dummy. Yeah, but, but for people who are, uh, who are. Nobody take offense to them. There are books like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so okay. that's uh, the, the, the second, the, the next thing that we're going to do. Uh, I'll also advise, uh, you know, potential, uh, uh, you know, operators to look in terms of the Transnet process now. Uh, if you go into the Transnet website, uh, uh, there's uh, a, a, a good uh, a site, you know, for this type of information and also a small, not a key, a FAQ, frequently asked questions uh, that uh, really sometimes helps a person, you know, who's not afraid with uh, requirements to quickly, you know, go through the issues and then maybe they can then get to the right documentation in the end. Freddie, if anybody wants to get in touch with the rail safety regulator, I mean, do they just find the switchboard or is there specific people that they need to be in touch with? Yeah, no, a, a, switchboard, a switchboard is good enough. Uh, everyone is, uh, uh, everyone, our reception, they will know who to talk to. This will be the safety permit management department. You, can, you are allowed to talk to the head of department there. Yeah. There are, you know, uh, 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 operational people, uh, uh, senior management people that you are able to talk to the safety permit administrators. Uh, we are always willing and available to, to assist. Yeah.